Welcome back. So today what we're going to do is take a look at three different cameras. We're going to take a look at the three main cameras. We're going to have a Nikon DSLR, a Canon DSLR, and then we're going to take a look at a Sony mirrorless camera. And what I'm going to do is just go over the buttons and the configurations so you have an idea of what everything does on your camera. Now I have picked more of the beginner or lower end cameras in this series. And the reason for this is because I don't think many people are going to go out there and buy pro cameras and then watch YouTube videos on how to work camera. So what we're going to do is we're taking a look at a D3500. Now Nikon has a variety of different options as far as what cameras you can get, but basically they're all going to be somewhat configured and laid out exactly the same. The main thing that you're going to see is between kind of the intermediate and the beginning cameras and when it adds an extra button to work the aperture independently. And we'll cover that. I will show you a Canon 5D Mark IV and show you the difference between kind of a toggle switch and then an independent button. The first thing is the front of the camera and we're not gonna go over the lens cause I'm gonna have a separate video here that's gonna cover the lens. These little two holes that you see right here are for your microphone. So if you are shooting video, this is your microphone. This button right here is to release your lens. So you'll press that in and it will release your lens. It will twist out. And just so you know, Canon and Nikon both twist in a different direction. This little thing right here is an autofocus illumination button. It also works for red eye reduction when you're trying to do red eye reduction. This little circle right here is an autofocus illumination button. So if you are in complete darkness and needed to use the little pop-up flash or just a regular flash in this case on your camera, this little light is gonna come on and throw some light on the subject via it's actually close enough for um, this to work and it's going to help illuminate so your camera can focus on your subject. It also works as red eye reduction as well. This little switch up here is to turn your camera on and off. And then this button right here is your shutter release button. And it has a couple of functions by default as you get it. One, it takes the picture. So you press it and it takes the picture. If you tap this button, it will initiate the meter on the camera. So this will allow you to meter the situation and get the correct exposure. And it also starts your autofocus. You would hold this down halfway and your autofocus would start. Now I'm not a big fan of this being used as your autofocus button. And when we get to the back of the camera, I'm going to show you an option of something that you can do. Now this thing up here is your hot shoe on the top of the camera. And this is your command dial right here. And we'll get to that when we look at the top of the camera. So we're going to go here to a secondary view. Now this is your lens mount here. So this silver thing is either usually going to be silver or black and it's your lens mount. And I have one suggestion to those of you who are just starting out. Your camera is going to come with a body cap and your lens is going to come with a rear lens cap. So a lens cap that goes on back here. And I see a lot of people because they get kits and they want to keep everything clean every time they're done. They take their lens off the camera, they put body cap on, they put the lens cap on, and then they store it away inside of their bag. That is a bad idea. What you want to do is keep your lens on your camera at all times, especially if you only have one lens. Every time you take this lens on and off, it gives it the chance two things. One, this metal and metal contact will eventually grind little metal shavings off and they'll get in your camera. And every time you take this off, it's a chance for dust and hair to get inside your camera. So leave that lens on unless you need to take it off to switch to another lens. This little guy right here is your camera strap and right here's part of the microphone as well. So we've got some microphone holes there. It looks like some microphone holes here. It's like we have a Bluetooth button here. We have some outputs. So we have HDMI and USB, and those are for adding peripherals such as video or downloading or whatever you would need to do. Let's go ahead and switch because there's not much else there. So on this side of the camera, we can see the other side for the camera strap. This right here is your card reader. So 
In this case, most likely this uses an SD card. You're gonna have a slot here for whatever type memory card you have. Now, in some cameras, you'll see that this is on the bottom of the grip. It's always not gonna be on the side. It really kind of depends on the camera and the brand of the camera. Now you can see right here where this is kind of cut away. This camera actually has a pop-up flash. I'm not a huge fan for beginners actually using flash at all. And these types of flash are really not that beneficial, but it does have a flash and that's what that little pop-up flash does. We're gonna go ahead and switch to the back. Now this is where most of the controls are gonna be. They're either gonna be on the back or on the top of the camera. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look here at the back. Now this top part is your hot shoe and that is for sliding and an external flash. External flash is by far a better option than the little pop-up flash. However, like I said before, flashes are difficult to use and I would suggest that you learn how to use your camera first and never use the flash. And then once you understand how to work your camera, then go ahead and take some time and learn how to use the flash. We have an eyepiece right here. Now most cameras, these kind of slide this direction up and off. I can't say that every single one does, but most likely they come off. Some come off really easy and you'll see people with pieces of tape up here to help hold that on. This little dial right here is called a diopter. And what the diopter does is let people who have prescription glasses adjust the camera so that they can look through the viewfinder without their glasses on. Now the adjustment is not huge inside of this camera. So you, if you have really bad eyes, this isn't gonna help you at all. And the way you would do this was just go ahead and focus on a subject with your camera and then look through the viewfinder and adjust this dial until it looks the clearest and then you've adjusted it. I would suggest once again, you put a little piece of gaffer's tape. So when I say put tape on a camera, 99% of people are using something called gaffer's tape. That is G-A-F-F-R-S tape. You can get that at any lighting or photography supply place. We'll come on over here. This is for your flash. So anytime you see that, that means flash. And this is plus or minus, and it is allowing you to adjust the output or power of your flash plus or minus. The next thing that we have down here is your LCD screen. This is gonna display any information on your camera. It's, it can also be used in a live view mode that you can see what's going on instead of looking through here. However, I'd suggest if you're using a camera, learn to use the eyepiece. Don't look at this like it's your phone. It looks weird, it doesn't work as well, it's hard to see outside. You definitely wanna to learn to use your eyepiece. You do not wanna use the screen on the back here. Now, if you're shooting video, that's a little bit different situation. And even there, I would plug in a video adapter in a larger screen. It just makes it easier to see. The next thing that we have here are some buttons and we'll get to these buttons up here. And when we take a look at the top of the camera, so here is your info button, and this is going to, you're gonna press this, and it's gonna display pertinent shooting information on the back of your camera. So you'll press it, that information will come up, such as white balance, ISO, or anything that you might wanna change, like continuous mode, focusing modes, any of that information right there. This little button here, it's called AEL and AFL, and that stands for auto exposure lock and auto focus lock. So what would happen is if you press the button in the front and you got your exposure where you wanted it and you were shooting in an automatic mode, you could press that and it would lock in your exposure. And then autofocus lock would be the same way. If you are pressing the button in the front and you got the focus where you wanted it, you could also press this button in and change it so it would lock your autofocus. This button is customizable. So you can go into your menu here and change how this button functions. This button can also be used to be your autofocus button. So what you can tell the camera is, hey, I don't want the button, the shutter button up here in the front to be the autofocus. I wanna have an independent button. So when you press this button in, it will autofocus. And when you let go, it stops focusing. That's called rear focus or back focus. I would suggest anyone who's new to photography switch the buttons and use this as your autofocus button versus the shutter button in the front. This little dial right here is gonna be your main dial to adjust 
your aperture and shutter speeds on the camera. So by default, if you, if you adjust this, it's going to change your shutter speed when you're shooting in a manual mode. Now there's a little toggle switch in on Nikon, it's up here and we'll take a look at it. And to switch your aperture, you have to press down that button and then once again, you use this dial and then it changes your aperture. And if you let go of that, then this button will change your shutter speed. It's a little bit cumbersome to deal with. Now, as you move up into higher price cameras, this is always your shutter button. And then usually down here, either this or a dial, you're gonna have a secondary button that controls your aperture. So you don't have to press that little button. I would say it's difficult and a little bit frustrating to use. This is your play button. So after you've taken a picture, whether a photo or a video and you wanna see it, you can hit play and it will display that up on your screen. And then if you wanna to toggle through, you can pr press your left and your right arrows here on this little dial. Menu is gonna bring up your menu of your camera and inside your menu, you can change and set anything that you want. And I will have a video or suggestions of what to set up on your camera inside of the menu. Now, this is the info button, and it looks like this is an info button here, but it actually is called the I button. And I'm guessing they had to name it the I button because this was already info. What this does is display some different views. So if you're just shooting with your camera, it will display some information here. Or if you press the play button and then the I button, it will toggle through like your histogram and a couple different ways to view images. What you should do when you get it, just go ahead and play around with it so you can see what it does. This is your select button. So whenever you're going through your menu or adjusting something and you wanna set it, you're gonna hit okay. And just like you can see in the arrows, these can go up, down, left, right, any direction. Right here is our magnification. So when you hit play, if you wanna magnify the image so you can see if something's sharp in a specific area, you can tap that. And then once you do that, you can press these arrows and it will let you kind of move around the image while it's magnified. This down here is gonna be to zoom out, essentially, so you can zoom out here. So right here, this button is saying that it will control your speed of your shutter. So whether you're in single, meaning every time you press the button, it only takes one picture, or a continuous mode, and once you press it in, it will just keep firing, or you can use a timer mode as well. And then you have a trash or a delete button. As you're taking an image, if you get something and it's totally out of focus and you don't like it, you can hit the trash button. It will usually give you a little menu, say, do you really wanna delete this? And then you would hit yes by tapping the little okay. And bam, that image is gone. And that's the basics of the back of the camera. And our last view here is going to be the top of the camera. So once again, this is our hot shoe. We have our camera strap holders right here, our eyepiece. So let's go ahead and take a look at the command dial. This is your command dial and whatever it's set on needs to line up with this. So in this case, it's set up to auto. Now you're gonna wanna move this over so your M is right here. In this class or tutorial, we're gonna be using manual only. We're not gonna be using any other options on the command dial. So manual, you are in complete control of everything that you wanna do. The next thing that we have is aperture priority. Basically you shut, you set the aperture and the camera picks the corresponding shutter speed and ISO to give you the correct exposure. Shutter priority, you pick the shutter speed, it picks the aperture and the ISO. Program, which is gonna be very similar to auto, is a fully automatic mode. This is an automatic mode. So these are called scene modes. So we have a portrait, macro, a running, Basically what they are for is automatic modes and you set it to this and then it helps the camera understand what you're photographing. So in a macro mode, it's gonna give you optimal settings for shooting macro photography if you don't know how to do it yourself. If you've got an action or sport, it's gonna to try to set that so you have a fast shutter speed so that your picture actually comes out because the camera doesn't know if something's running or something is completely still. This is that dial that you will tap to control your shutter speed and your aperture. Now, this little symbol right here is for your aperture. So before I told you, when you adjust this dial, it changes your shutter speed. 
if you want to adjust your aperture, you need to take another finger and hold down this button. You're going to hold it down and while it's held down, you can adjust this and then it will adjust your aperture. You can also use this button in automatic modes for over and under exposing your images. This is your kind of live view or movie record button. So you would tap that to start recording video. And that's the basics of what all the buttons are on your camera. Obviously your battery is going to usually slide into the bottom and it usually only goes one direction. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.